welcome to Papa Bear Studio in Duryea, Pennsylvania again. I have the honor, privilege, and pleasure to introduce to you a fantastic drummer, Steve Carilla. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Steve, I finally got the opportunity to hear you play recently. Before we talk about the Wade Preston Band, though, why don't you tell us how the heck did you get started playing the drums? Well, interestingly enough, um, my first musical influence way back in probably 1984-ish, we were live He's then. dating himself. Yes. <laughs> um, I came home from school one day and turned the television on, and the monkeys were on. Yes! That was great! <laughs> so the monkeys. So what, uh, this is like 1986 or so, Yeah, I'm something guessing. like that. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I was in probably fourth or fifth grade, so some thereabouts. Okay, so there. you're a little younger than me. Uh, <laughs> really? No, come on. I tell people my first drumming idol wasn't really a drummer. <laughs> that's true, that's true. He, he, he played one on television. Yes. Have you heard the story about how he became the drummer? No. It's, no. it's kind of cool. They, uh, they, they stood the four of them after they picked uh, you know, the, the four characters and they said, who wants to be the drummer? And three of them stepped backwards. Oh, that's funny. Except Mickey. So, Except that's him. No, so yeah, I mean, and then I joined my uh, you know, high school band and I went through band and I took private lessons somewhere maybe around 11th or 12th grade. And, you know, went to school for music education. Where'd you go to school? Marywood University. I, well, well, let's let's go backwards. Where'd you go to high school? I went to Mid Valley High School. What other influences did you have? Uh, you know, well, growing up, um, it was the '90s, so I was into you know Pearl Jam, and Nirvana, the Soundgarden, and the Seattle Sound, Stone Temple Pilots, and, yeah, yeah. and Smashing Pumpkins. The drumming I've heard from you does not sound like it was Seattle influenced. I, I've heard some really cool uh, well, uh, jazz and, and... New Orleans-y kind of second line kind of street. So, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, it's in there somewhere though. You know that I like to, I like to turn it up and, and play loud every once in a while. You know, I went to school for classical percussion. So okay. there's lots of nuances in that and you have to, you know, be very precise and there's lots to the world of music. Of, Classical percussion. Absolutely. Um, and then after college, I got into jazz drumming. I, I started taking uh, jazz drum set lessons, and I was, uh, you know, listening to a whole new world of music. You know, that I didn't really, I actually never really checked out until I was probably, you know, 23, 24. You know. That's so um, yeah, and and just listening and and working on new things. Well, you certainly took a step past Mickey Dolan's. That's for sure. Well. You know. <laughs> Uh, but I don't think your, your your musical skills are limited just to the drums. From what I understand, you play a little ukulele. As I do well. play. I, I yeah. tell people I play a little guitar, <laughs> meaning, meaning ukulele. Very literally. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, a couple of years ago, um, a ukulele showed up in my Christmas stocking, and uh, it it really changed my life. It's just a few I, years ago, literally, like or five six years ago. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And. Uh, Never played guitar, never really did anything like that. Played some piano in college, um, but yeah, fell in love with the ukulele, you know? That's cool. I mean, at the time, if you want me to get like a little bit deep, sure. Um, at the time, I kind of really didn't like music. I was kind of miserable. I was playing, I was playing like a gig up in the uh, Poconos with a band I won't mention. I hated it. You weren't having fun. <laughs> I wasn't having fun, you know? Playing, Playing like a disco beat and you know making a little bit of money and and it was cool but but I wasn't inspired I wasn't you know artistically interested in anything that was happening on on the bandstand well wow. which is you know probably my fault I'm not blaming the band really um, but yeah so this ukulele shows up and uh, all of a sudden I get to learn and I get to relearn what it's like to check out a new instrument and learn. Uh, and have like these breakthrough moments that don't always happen when you've been playing an instrument for 25 years. Like, wow, here's a C chord. Like, oh, it's they can't that's an amazing thing, you, you know? You like, can't play a C chord on the drums. No. <laughs> so, so I got to kind of remember what it's like to fall in love with playing an instrument and, and learning uh, a new instrument. And then I took that and try to sit behind a drum set and say, okay, this is what it's like to love music again, now how do I bring this back to my drumming? You know, when we were in college, we would always get stressed out with music, you know, because that was what we did every single day, and we'd joke about how music therapy was 
good for everyone but musicians, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, you know, but with the ukulele, I mean, it really was music therapy and it really helped me kind of fall back in love with music. That's great. Yeah. So, so, are, so are, you, are you doing anything with the ukulele, uh, semi-professionally or otherwise? Yeah, or? I, have, um, I have a community ukulele group called the Kennedy Creek Strummers that um, they get together um, once a week, Tuesdays, up, up in Waverly. And we we get we get together. It's all ages. It's not. It's it's all like you know amateur. But actually, some of them are getting. Actually, everyone in the group is getting that's, quite good. That's good. I used, I, yeah, I guess I shouldn't call them amateurs anymore. But um, you know, everyone's everyone's doing well. We just played in Lancaster at a big ukulele convention over the uh, over the weekend. A we ukulele played. convention. Yes, yes. We drove to Lancaster and we played four songs for about 400 ukulele enthusiasts. Wow. Believe it or not. Yeah. I, I would have never not. ever expected to yeah. hear those words strung together <laughs> in one sentence. Yeah. But hey. And it was great. And you know, the ukulele community is all peace and love and, and you know, play music. So it's a nice cool cool vibe. Everyone's friendly. So drumming, um, what projects have you worked on? What are you working on now? And what can we expect from you in the future? What are your goals and aspirations? Um, I'm kind of a freelance drummer, you know, I play with a lot of different people. I played in a wedding band called Music for Models for a decade or so, maybe even a little longer. Um, Marco Marcinko fronts that. Uh, I play with a guitarist, a um, friend of mine, Aaron McClellan. We do a steady Thursday night up at Ruth Chris Steakhouse up at the... I've uh, seen you do that. Mo yeah, Mohegan Sun Casino. I play with Wade Preston. Who happens to be around here somewhere? Where is he? <laughs> well, there he is, up there in the corner. Where's with friends? So Wade's a great guy, obviously, and he's an amazing talent. And uh, <laughs> shit, where's my wallet? <laughs> and what else am I playing with? You know, I do. Um, I just recently did a little fill-in gig over the weekend with a local um, musical. I like to play a lot of college and high school, and community theater musicals. Um, I uh, oh, thank you, thank you for that. I just got paid from Wade. But whoever calls me, man, I will. I will play. I played a. Po I played a polka gig over the weekend. Really? Yeah. Play some. Uh, actually, well, oh wait. Actually, some people in the band. I get yelled at if I call it a polka band. It's not a polka band. It's a German umpa band. So, uh, drums, trumpet, uh, trombone, sousaphone. You know that kind Very of vibe. Cool. It's, it is fun. It's a lot of fun. And that stuff actually swings. Like, I get, yeah. like it's not. You know, people might think that's e it's easy, but it's not easy. You know, I've so. I've heard that an, uh, a polka band yeah. is one of the most challenging bands to be in, not only for the uh, the technicality of it, but the stamina. Stam yeah, and you have to like anything else, you have to know the music. You can't just sit back uh, behind the drum kit and play, you know, a polka beat. Like you have to know the melody and you have to know the song form, mm -hmm. just like a just like a jazz gig. You know, just like any any gig, you have to know the song. So, what's on your hit list? What's on your bucket list of of, uh, of drum gigs or, or drum projects? Staying busy, man. Like just you playing. Go. You know, I play restaurants. I play bars. As long as I'm playing with good musicians, the magic is happening on the bandstand. Sometimes people listen. Sometimes people don't listen. I'm very familiar with that. <laughs> very much. But so. but what's important is that it's got to sound good, regardless, you know. Give us a road story. Jerry what's Gage. this rated? What's this rated? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you need it to be. Um, a road story. Not mentioning names. This this artist I was working with, we were driving a very long distance, and we stopped at McDonald's. And um, I don't really eat McDonald's food, so I'm like hanging out. We left the McDonald's and, and we realized that the artist that I was working with left something very, very, very valuable back at the, um, the McDonald's. Um, she actually threw it in the garbage can and we had to drive hours back to that McDonald's and then See, me, dig tell, through a garbage. Tell me it was there. It was there. Oh, thank God. It was there. Okay. It right. was there. My parents are going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's. So do you have a day job? I do. You do? I do have a day job. So um, when I graduated college years ago, back in, well, no, it was this century. I did graduate this century. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's yeah, close. Good. But um, keep forgetting we. You know, the flipped. last thing I really wanted to do actually was was teach music. I wanted to play. I wanted a gig. I wanted to like, you know, be famous. I wanted to like be interviewed on internet TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I could knock one off your bucket list. <laughs> so the the moral of the story is 
you know, I ended up eventually, fast forward several years, I got a day job and I finished my music certification and I, I am now a, a proud, happy music teacher. I teach at a local charter school. I teach kindergarten to eighth grade general music. And boy, does the day job help. Boy, is it nice to have a day job. Yeah. Boy, is it nice to have a day job. Um, Cause I was, you know, I was playing with any, I mean, I still will play with anyone who calls me, but I was playing with anyone who'll call me, you know? <laughs> How much does a gig pay? It pays 25 bucks. Perfect, let's do it. Mm. You know, so those days are, are kind of over and I, you know, and if you were there, if you're watching this and you're there and you're making and playing those gigs, I'm not knocking you, okay? That's, it's all good. We all have a different story. Anything what you would like to tell the the, the, the audience about any gigs coming up? Any, uh, uh, like a um, little, little shameless promotion? What's happening recently? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, if you want to come and say hello, Thursday nights at Ruth Chris. Wait, what are we playing? We have um, March 31st. Sunday, Sunday, March 31st. Would you like to come and make an appearance? Sunday, March 31st. Hi. This guy, <laughs> here we go. And I, and some guy that plays bass. John Ventry. Oh, John Ventry. Von, yeah, fabulous bass yeah, player. Brilliant. Right. brilliant. He plays all four strings. We'll be playing at the Stone House. <laughs> oh, he'll give you flying lessons too. And oh, and he, he will actually be flying his little Cessna to the gig. This is very important. This is very important. If you're a drummer out there um, and you're watching this video and you're one of my two fans, remember, do not lose where one is. Don't lose one. One is very important. One is the loneliest number. One, one is the loneliest number, but it's the most important number. <laughs> and if you lose one, you're gonna sound like what? I, I don't know. You're gonna sound. It's gonna be. It's gonna sound like you lost one. <laughs> Actually, that's right. Yeah. So enough talk. Yeah. How about a little play? Yeah. Let's play. Let's play. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Carilla. Music for Models, Wade Preston Band, Ukulele, what was the name of that? The Kennedy Creek Strummers. Kennedy Creek Strummers playing the ukulele. The man's multi-talented. Check him out whenever you get a chance. And thanks for stopping by Papa Bear Studio.